Ooh, what is going on y'all it's your boy Ricky Moto welcome back to yet another video it has been a while guys and I'm super excited because I am celebrating 4,000 subscribers today um, this is a long awaited video and I've been hyping it up for a while now so finally we are getting around to the 4,000 subscribers special now if you haven't been up to tabs basically we are celebrating by doing a Q&A and this video will be voiceovered so whatever footage that you are watching on the screen right now is pretty much just some random like backdrop prayer ride stuff that I shot the other day. I hear some sirens in the background right now. I wonder what's going on. But anyways, let's bust this video out. Um, before I get into the actual questions, we have limited edition forged carbon fiber key tags that I make from scratch available in the description below. Thank you for all of you guys who have ordered so far. They also come signed at no additional cost. So make sure to go get one. Link in the description below. It is $39.99 with free shipping. And I also just made a fresh batch right now. So if you do order uh, within the next few days uh, as this video comes out, uh, the shipping will be a lot faster. We're going to be starting off with Todd Swafford. Sorry if I butchered your name. So he said, I am a new rider and I was going to ask if you could touch on how a new rider should get over the nerves slash fears of death getting on a motorcycle. There are a lot of people in my family that don't agree with my decision to get a bike and it brings me down and makes me second guess my decision. I keep telling myself that this is going to create a spark in my life and give me the courage to take more risk. Anyways, just wanted to hear your take on it. Do you still get nervous every time you get on the bike? Q&A is a great idea. Well, thank you, Todd, for your amazing and thorough question over here. So yeah, this is actually something that's really, really big that applies not only to my life, but also to a lot of fellow riders or aspiring riders. With the first point talking about getting over fears and nerves and if I you know, feel nervous still to this day, I gotta say, you will get over it. Um, now that I hop on a bike, it just feels like second nature. I don't even think about it. But you know, in the beginning, every time I got on a bike, I would actually just like pray to myself. And it's this practice that I should actually continue to do because I stopped doing that. I don't know about you guys, but like, I've considered myself to be quite religious. So, um, you know, and motorcycles are inherently dangerous. There's no doubt about it. You know, just look at the statistics. You don't have any protection, even if you're wearing a helmet, gloves, a full body suit, like you're still out in the open, no airbags. I know they make airbag style like gear that you can wear on your body, but still, if you get into an accident, if you get into an accident or a crash of some sort, your body will literally be yeeted onto the street, which is not a fun time. Let alone cars can't even see you on the road because you're so tiny. So, you know, it is inherently dangerous, which is why, you know, it's definitely a big topic. And if anything, that's the main reason why it's difficult for parents to approve of that for you know people who want to ride. I think when you ride a motorcycle, you just have to come to terms with it and just understand what you're getting into. Yes, this is a dangerous activity. It's a dangerous sport. Are you willing to take that risk? You know, you got to tell yourself that, you know, every time you hop on that crotch rocket, you are putting your life on the line. I mean, the same could be said with everything else. You know, every time you drive a car, you're also at risk on the road. You never know what can happen, but the risk on a motorcycle is just significantly higher. So you really have to weigh out the pros and cons. You know, is it worth that risk for you? And for all the people that do ride, it is worth the risk because we're still riding today. Now, in terms of your family and, uh, you know, them not approving or not agreeing with your decision to get a bike, I definitely am there with you. You know, the same applies with me. I come from a very traditional family. Um, you know, there's been deaths from motorcycles within my family even. And so there's a lot of trauma that, you know, they carry with that. And so when I said I wanted to get a bike, it was like playing with fire. It was a really big deal. And I've been wanting a bike since I was like 16 and I've been pushing them and pushing them like, hey, let me, you know, do this. But it was only until I was like 21 years old that I finally pulled the trigger on doing it. And even till this day, they're not, you know, happy about that. They're, they don't approve of me riding. And even when I do go on rides, um, they're still like saying stuff about it and that's just what comes with it. I think the main thing is just a lack of trust or a lack of communication. You know, I, I see that your comment mentions that you've expressed how this is, you know, gonna create a spark in your life and even give you courage and that's great and all but I think you also have to communicate with them um, the responsibility aspect right I don't know exactly what age you're at but I'm assuming a lot of new riders are in the younger demographic either you know late teens early adulthood so this is a prime time where you're at your most reckless and your most sort of rebellious stage in life so that could be another factor as to why there's a lack of trust and if you're able to handle riding um, are you able to contain yourself and not ride crazy? Are you going to be speeding, cutting up? So if you can kind of communicate that, that you're going to be responsible, not only when it comes to the physical riding aspect, but even all of the components that come along with it, like the finances, funding the motorcycle on your own, uh, paying for the insurance on your own, doing the maintenance on your own, even, you know, getting the course and the equipment. You know, if you are able to show your responsibility somehow, like if you go to the DMV and schedule an appointment to take your 
permit test and then sign up for an MSF course and pay for that yourself, that will not only show your dedication to this whole entire thing, but also your responsibility of taking the right steps and even funding this experience on your own. But of course, everyone's life situation is different. I don't know your parents, I don't know your family, how they handle stuff, but um, all I have to say is that you just have to prove your sort of responsibility, that you're able to handle this, that this is not gonna um, put your life at risk too much. The next question comes from Huncho Henry. A short little question, where are you from? I am from New York within the United States of America. Next up, we have Slow VQ300. Is the R7 powerful enough? I debated between the R6 and the R7, and I plan on getting the R7, but worry that although it's a great starter, it doesn't have enough raw power for the adrenaline I want, and also I'm not a starting rider. This would be my second bike. Keep up the great content. So this was actually a big topic when I was deciding on getting the R7. For me, the R7 is actually the third bike. You know, it really depends on what you're looking for. Personally, I actually wanted the R6, but it was out of my budget, which is why I opted for the R7. The R7 is probably the closest Yamaha bike that you can get to the R6, not only style-wise, handling-wise, characteristics, design, even performance. Now the R7 is definitely not gonna be as fast as the R6 on the top end. Uh, the R6 just pulls like, like there's no tomorrow, but the R7 is no slack, I gotta say. You know, on paper, even if you look at the specs, the R7 0 to 60 times are equivalent, if not even faster than the R6, just because of its excess torque. Now, when you get to the higher RPMs and the higher speeds, definitely you can feel it bogged down. But, you know, I personally really enjoy the R7. Although I wish I would've got the R6, I don't regret getting the R7 because I love the preppiness of it. I'm coming from an R3, and I gotta say, it, the difference wasn't too big. The R7 is definitely faster than the R3, but it wasn't like night and day, like twice to three times faster. It was definitely quicker. I think the R7 is a great street bike. It's fast, it's nimble, it's comfortable to ride. Um, you can easily hit three digits within a matter of seconds. You said you're not a starting rider, so what did you ride before that? If you're coming from something like a 300, 400, the R7 is a pretty good jump. It'll feel pretty familiar, but you definitely get a lot more power. The R6 is another ballpark, but I'd say anyone in the market looking for the R7 or even R6, um, if you have the opportunity to rent another bike or like rent one out, or if you have any friends that have 600s, you know, hop on it, give it a try, see if you like it. Um, you never really know if you're gonna like something unless you try it out. Unfortunately, I can't give a solid answer to this question whether to get an R6 or an R7, but I will say the R7 is plenty fast and I think it's more than enough power for the street. Next question comes from Huncho Henry. Hmm, was this a repeat question? Oh yes, this is from the same guy but a different account. What is the general cost to own an R7? Um, it really varies on your um, origin, I guess, like where you're buying it from. And it really differs because every dealer will have its own sort of markup. Fortunately, the dealership I got it from, I'm cool with the guy. I bought bikes from him in the past. Um, so he basically sold it to me for MSRP, which I think was about 9300 And then after taxes, um, I did get a wheel warranty, like a wheel tire rim warranty thing on top. I didn't get any other extended warranties, but just basically the bike alone, stock, with no additional add-ons, like no quick shifter, nothing like that. It's a 2023 model, brand new with zero miles on it. It came out to around 12.5K out the door. So those are all the YouTube comments that I selected for this Q&A. We're going to hop into the Instagram questions real quick. So we have one from Art McKean. Do you miss the R3? Oh boy, I do. Um, you know, it was my first sport bike. Uh, my first bike ever was actually a Z125 Pro, but it was more of a naked style bike. It was like a mini bike, kind of like a toy, but the R3 was my first sport bike and it was my dream bike for a while. There was a lot of emotional connection that I built to it. It took me about six months or so to get used to power and, you know, wanted something faster. Having the R3, I learned so much about how to ride, how to lean, how to control the bike. Even like when it came to modifications and maintenance, I learned so much about mechanics to the R3. I think the R3 is such a solid bike for so such a solid price best looking 300 in my opinion unfortunately i never got to fully build it out to the way i envisioned it to but so i've always you know think back i look back at the r3 and you know if i had the opportunity to have it back i would but i'm not at a financial point where i can just have multiple bikes laying around um, I did sell it to a subscriber, which is super cool. And I sold it for a steal, honestly. I sold it below market value. And you know, the new owner enjoys it too. He absolutely loves it. And he did a couple of modifications to it himself as well. So the next question comes from HK Moto Photo. What will be your next bike? Oh boy. Um, to be honest, I haven't really been thinking about it because I'm pretty content with the R7 for now. I was thinking about potentially, you know, maybe trading the R7 in in the future for an R6, but then I thought about it, I'm like, it's not going to be that much of a difference. It's going to be very similar, sort of, if I were to get another bike, I might actually get a cruiser, like a naked bike, like an MT-09 or something, while also keeping the R7. 
but I haven't necessarily looked into getting another bike. Last question from Incredi Bell. Dream bike? I've always liked Yamaha, and so I guess, you know, the first thing you can say is like, oh, Yamaha R1 or R1M, because that's like the dream Yamaha, right? But honestly, before I even got any bike, my dream bike at the time, when I was first getting into motorcycles in high school, was the CBR 1000 R, specifically the older one, uh, the one that Do It With Dan had. Do It With Dan was actually the one who even got me into motorcycles and motor vlogging and all that stuff, and he had a CBR 1000. I didn't even know what kind of bikes were around during that time, but I just watched his videos and he just happened to have the bike, so I fell in love with that bike. And I gotta say, the CBR 1000, the older generation, looks absolutely beautiful. Now, if I were to say dream bike, like a dream bike that I would actually want to get in my life, I probably wouldn't get the CBR 1000. I feel like I only liked the CBR 1000 just because that was his bike and that was the first, you know, bike that I fell in love with. But I would have to say my dream bike, if I were to actually go out and get one, would have to be a Ducati Panigale. I'm kind of jumping between the V2 and the V4 because, you know, those are like the, the V4 is like the, you know, the top of the line's flagship, but I also like the sleeker look of the V2. So who knows, maybe I'll pick one up in the future. But as for right now, you know, I'm sticking with the R7 for a while. I still have a lot of plans with it and I want to build it out completely. But with that being said, I want to thank you guys all for the questions that you have asked. I apologize if I missed any questions or didn't get to every single question. I didn't get too many questions, first of all, but out of the ones that I did select, um, I wanted to keep it relevant to the, the, the YouTube channel and whatnot. Hopefully I was able to answer your questions for those who have asked and maybe the substance that I provided in this video can even help you guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like and a comment below. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button as well as turning on those post notifications to see when I upload. With that being said, it's been your boy Ricky Moto, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.